death door to the beyond death door to the beyond an excerpt from lotus from inner lay what can be said about death and how can you say anything about it it is not possible for any word to carry the meaning of death what does this word death means in fact it means nothing What do you mean when you use the word death? It is simply a door beyond which we do not know what happens. We see a man disappearing inside the door. We can see up to the door and then the man simply disappears. We cannot see from where we are. From inside the room, inside the place, we cannot see where the man disappears from the door unless we go out of the inside your word death can give only the meaning of the door but what really happens beyond the door remember door is not the thing door is to be passed through you cannot stay at the door then what happens to one who disappears through the door that we cannot see beyond what happens to him and what is this do just stopping of a breath is the breath the whole life don't you have anything more than the breath indeed there is more than breath breath stops body deteriorates if you are body and breath alone then there is no problem then death is meaningless it is not a door to anything it is simply a stopping not a disappearance it is just like a clock all of a sudden breath stops death comes body begins to disappear the clock is ticking tick tick ticking continuously working then it stops you don't ask where the tick tick has gone that won't that would be meaningless it has gone nowhere it was a mechanism and something has gone wrong in the mechanism you can repair this mechanism then it will start ticking again is death like a clock is stopping is stopping just like that or it is like a candle that was lit right now all of a sudden with the breeze it is blown out does death means that if so it is not a mystery it is nothing real but how can life disappear so easily life is not mechanical remember life is awareness the clock is not aware the flame is not aware you can listen to tick tick the clock has never listened to it you can see the light of the candle but the candle never sees its lights because candle is not aware the clock never hears its tick tick because clock is not aware you can listen to your own heartbeat but who is this listener if only the heartbeat is life then who is this listener if breath is the only life how can you be aware of your breath that is why all eastern techniques of meditation use breath awareness as a subtle technique because if you become aware of breathing then who is this awareness it must be something beyond breath because you can look at it and the looker cannot be the object you can be a witness you can close your eyes and you can see the breath going in and coming out who is this seer 
the witness. It must be a separate force that does not depend on breathing. When breathing disappears, it is the stopping. When the breathing disappears, it is the stopping of the clock. But where does this awareness go? Where does this awareness move to? It is mystery. Death is a door. It is not a stopping. Awareness moves but your body remains at the door. Awareness moves but your body remains at the door. Just as you have come here and left your shoes at the door. The body is left outside the temple and your awareness enters the temple. It is the subtlest of the phenomena. Life is nothing before it. Basically life is just a preparation for death. And only those who are wise, who learn in their life how to die, they are really and indeed the men of substance. If you do not know how to die, you have missed the whole meaning of life. It is a preparation, a training, a discipline. And meditation is the process how to die consciously, knowingly, with total awareness. Life is not the end. It is just a discipline to learn the art of dying. But you are afraid. You are scared at the very word death. The moment this word is uttered or you hear this word, a trembling begins. A fear surges through your bones. That means you have not yet known life. Because life never dies. And remember, life cannot die. Somewhere you have become identified with the body, with the mechanism. The mechanism is to die. The mechanism cannot be eternal because mechanism depends on many things. It is indeed a conditioned phenomena. Awareness is unconditional. It does not depend on anything. It can float like a cloud in the sky. It has no roots. It is not caused. And it is never born. So it can never die. Because awareness is always. Awareness always is. Whenever someone dies, you have to meditate near them. Because a temple is just near. It is the holy ground. Never be childish. Never bring your curiosities. Be silent so you can watch and see. Sometimes very meaningful is happening. Indeed something very meaningful is happening. Do not miss the moment when life force enters the realm of the beyond. Do not miss the moment when the life force enters the realm of the beyond. When Lala Ji Razi Allah Ta'ala Unu, the Nakshbandi master, was about to enter into the beyond, it was 14th of August 1931. In the room, Lalaji was lying on the bed. Along with him was his younger brother Sufi Raghubar Dayal Razi Allah Ta'ala Uno, popularly known as Chachaji. His son Mahatma Jagmohan Narayan Razi Allah Ta'ala Uno. His Khalifa Azrat Sufi. Brij Mohan Lal Razi Allah Ta'ala Unu, the concert of Lala Ji, Sufi Dadi Ji Razi Allah Ta'ala Unu, 
and Sufi Shakuntala Devi Razila Tala who know the concert of Sufi Brij Mohanlal and along with them was the uncle master Hazrat Malvi Shah Abdul Ghani Khan Razila Tala who know in the room and Lala Ji Razila Tala who know gave the experience as the consciousness as the life force was leaving a particular part of the body he keep on narrating as a commentary that the life force is now releasing from the toes it has left there is no awareness there it is lifeless it has reached up to the knees then to the thighs and the groin now it is reaching the heart center up to the heart the body below that is lifeless and when it reached the vocal cord he said now it has reached the vocal cord and beyond this i will not be able to even give the description or narrate what happens because the vocal cord the voice is also disappearing and then when finally the awareness disappeared everybody felt that the room was filled with tremendous light light of thousand suns and it disappeared where it disappeared in the unknown oblivion someone asked buddha where would you go when you leave the world buddha lit a candle and then he blew out the candle he asked the monks one moment the candle was not lit then the light came where and how did the candle flame came the candle flame was unlit it came closer and closer and closer and then mystically something jumped from the the majestic flame to the candle and it got lit this is happens between master and disciple nothing is given nothing is done yet is still a lot happens just there is a jump jump from a one lit flame to the other and in that moment of mystical happening something jumps from the unlit candle to the lit one and it gets lit the disciple attains to that state then you blow the candle buddha blew the candle and he asked the monks where a flame that was there a moment ago where has it disappeared to this is how the life force the awareness disappears and merges in the unknown oblivion this is why we never say death instead we see changing the form the consciousness the awareness that was embodied into body mind realm that you can envision has become disembodied just as constantly the radio stations are emitting sound waves i am speaking a sound wave is emitting and through my system the analog sound waves are converted into digital sound waves and it reaches your equipment there is a connectivity through the internet there is a connectivity 
my system converts my analog voice into digital and then it reaches your equipment once again your equipment converts the digital sum because in that form this is the way of communion it cannot hear the digital unless it is coming transformed into analog then your system converts that digital sound vibrations sound waves into analog once again and you hear it if your system is down then you will not be able to hear me if internet connection is not there you will not be hear me something like that happens the body when the awareness is embodied it is like a internet connection you do not have to make much of an effort just come in the presence and the sound waves can be heard but when this awareness becomes disembodied you need a special equipments and those equipments science have not made it is said that one day science will be able to capture the digital sound vibrations of the masters like buddha krishna jesus heraclitus zarathustra lao tse and many others and then through the equipment it can convert into analog so that we can hear when a master disappears his awareness disappears body remains at the door but the awareness which is the subtlest the light as you may call it disappears into the unknown oblivion and when it disappears into the unknown oblivion it becomes disembodied because awareness is already disembodied it has no form no shape it is the equipment of the body that gives it a form and a shape the energy that is overflowing because of the equipment of the vocal cord it is becoming the sound vibrations and through this internet connection and the system on your laptop it converts first my system converts into digital then your system reconverts it back from digital to analog and you hear but there is no time gap into this happening so far the distance thousands and thousands of miles yet still it is happening simultaneously as the word emits out of the vocal cord it reaches you your ear drums and you hear the sound vibration there is no gap it is just instantaneous what a mystery is this and when the awareness disappears you are not able to hear it something like this happens in the moments of when the body remains and awareness enters the temple of eternity awareness enters the temple of eternity you are no more encased embodied the consciousness becomes free and the masters attain to this state of total freedom even in their life that's why we celebrate their disappearance and through that we also learn how to disappear into the unknown oblivion and the moment a master is disappearing this awareness is disappearing into the unknown oblivion tremendous energy is released 
if we are meditative and aware to that energy patterns, energy level, we can be enlightened to that very moment. We can be awakened to that very moment. We can be awakened to that very moment. This is why when Lala Ji was entering into the Mahapari Nirvana, they were only selected people who can be there. When Buddha entered Mahapari Nirvana, it, it was age of 82. 80 years of age, Buddha was entering Mahapari Nirvana. First the physical body dissolved. And just before that, he told Anand, and everyone that I am now going to leave. What a tremendous awareness is that, that I am going to leave now. Because the people around him were aware of that, they knew what death means to them. It is a dissolution of the awareness into the unknown oblivion. He was aware. For the same time, a man came running. His name was Sujat. He told, asked Anand that he want to meet the Thagat. Thus came the scorn, was the name given to Buddha. Thus came and the scorn. Anand told him, that, Mahap that Tathagat has already entered into the room because he is in entering into the unknown oblivion, Mahapari Nirvana. Buddha heard this. He said, Anand, let Sujat come in because I do not want anybody to say that Tathagat was alive when he refused the meeting with the person who came seeking his presence. And when he had spoken to Sujat, he again entered. First the physical body dissolved and he came back because at the moment, in the moments of death, in the moments of disappearance, it is the physical body dissolves, but the thoughts, the mind, the emotions, the feelings remain. They do not disappear unless and until one attains to enlightenment. And this is why the cycle of birth and rebirth continues. Because the mind lives on. Whatever you were doing unconsciously that lives on. If you have left a file incomplete today, tomorrow it will hang around your consciousness. You may be dreaming about it. And the first thing when you come back in the morning, you have to start back on that file. But if it had been over the weekend, then you have to recapitulate that file that you had been working and maybe if you have stayed there for another hour, you would have completed, you would have finished that work. But then you had to leave. And when you leave, over the weekend came, then another public holiday came, and then something else came. You have to set aside that file for almost two weeks. And then after two weeks you return to that file. You will take a while to recapitulate what you have been doing and what you know. This is what happens when you take birth again. You have to recapitulate all that was incomplete. Maybe a few more assignments, few more elements may be added to that file as your assignment because in the moments of disappearance the unconsciousness disappears into the collective unconsciousness and then into cosmic unconsciousness. When awareness dawns there is cosmic, there is individual consciousness, collective consciousness, cosmic consciousness, which is super consciousness. This is why Sufi Braj Mohan Lal Razila Tala Uno has said that man is a seven-story building and I have spoken on this. 
So Buddha, after disappearing, dissolving the physical body, entered and this time as he entered into the existence from another door, from the door of the mind, the mental body, the emotions, the thoughts, the feelings dissolved. Then finally, the nirvanic body dissolved. And this is why it is called Mahapari Nirvana. When Chachaji Razila Talauno, the younger brother of Sufi, Ramchandra Zilla Talauno, popularly known as Lalaji, was entering into Samadhi. It was 7th of June 1947, the city of Kanpur in at Aryanagar where he lived. It was in the afternoon. Chachaji has the habit of taking a snack in the afternoon and his snack was two favorite things. Number one, a roasted potato or roasted black gram. It is known as black chickpeas. There is a particular way potatoes are roasted. You may see that in the West now we get baked potatoes, but that baking is done in the oven. So at certain portions you may get a little burn effect and then it is served with butter or sour cream with other garnishings, western seasonings. And in India it used to be roasted in the open fire that is made of wood or cow dung cakes. That was one of the most simple and common way of roasting. The cow dung was used as the its cakes are made and lit. It gives a nice flavor and used as fuel. So it used to be done in that, but I am not sure how his, most likely his would be done in the fireplace where the wood is lit and the potato. So he had that. He complained of some pain and he dispersed of everyone from the room. He was sitting on the bed, squatted in Padmasan. Chachaji was of a strong build. During his childhood age, youth, he started doing the wrestling and he was well versed in that. So the body was of that build. His concert, Sufi Jayadevi was with him and he sent everyone for one excuse or the other. And then all of a sudden he entered into Samadhi. This is a conscious dissolution. A master enters into, con into the unknown oblivion knowingly. When Nakshbandi Sufi Brijmohanlal was to enter into Samadhi, he knew his time has come. 6th of January 1955, he set his foot on the journey from Lucknow to Mumbai. His concert, Sufi Shakuntla Devi asked him to accompany him. And he said, you had already been to that place and next time when we are going elsewhere, a particular name he had mentioned, then you accompany. During this journey, he traveled from city to city. Every time when he will be traveling his program of the journey, his schedules were published in the monthly magazine called Sant. His journey 
from Lucknow to Mumbai was published. 6th of January 1955, the journey begins from Central Station in Lucknow, going through the different cities. That time the train was to be changed as Jhasi. That was the main hub. So from Lucknow he passed through the city of Shah Jahanpur where my mother lived, her do his daughter lived and then other places. Normally he will come and pay a visit but he had another disciple who lived in the same city and the time was short. So he asked my, his daughter to come and visit him. But she was a little like a spoiled in love for her father. She said, if he does not want to come, I have no way I would want to go. And when the message reached him, he came. She asked him, Pitaji, let me accompany you to Mumbai. And in response to her, she, he said, who you will come back with? Remember the awareness of the enlightened master and the veil of maya, the conditioned curtain, condition that he has created. This is what in Hinduism, in Vedanta, we call it maya, the yoga maya. Through his yoga maya, he created a curtain that all these people who were publishing his schedules of travel did not remember did not it did not stop them that this schedule is incomplete it has no return journey he told my mother who you will come back with and the veil enveloped her awareness enveloped her understanding then he reached the city of Agra where his brother-in-law came to see him and he told him, he asked him when you would be coming back. He said, no, no, on, on my way back, you will accompany us. They could not understand. They had no plan of accompanying the master to city of Lucknow. This is the way of the masters entering into existence, entering into the unknown of oblivion, singing and dancing, meditating with total awareness. The, the disappearance, the samadhi of these masters tells us the way that as a disciple you should enter into the unknown oblivion when it is your time. Not crying and lamenting but singing and dancing, rejoicing every moment that the awareness was encaged, was embodied. It is now free. There is tremendous joy. Tremendous energy is released because he is going to meet his eternal beloved. How pleasant that moment could be. Can you imagine? There is total awareness. And then it happened, Chachaji took Samadhi. He was sitting in the lotus posture. So it was decided that he should be late to lie down. Chachaji never let anyone who was Brahman or chill or women to touch his feet. So he had the cook in the house who was of the Brahman caste. He never allowed him to touch his feet. So he held on to the feet of Chachaji in order to pull it, to make him change the posture from lotus to lying down and as he was going to touch his feet all of a sudden the person get a tremendous shock as if Chachaji pulled his leg and hit him with that no Pandit you cannot do that because he never allowed him to touch his feet so how can he allowed when his consciousness has disappeared and the body is 
left at the door. The body is still warm. He cannot allow that. You are not even aware of when you are waking, so your so-called waking, and he is disappearing into the unknown oblivion. Partially he has entered, the process is not complete. He has not allowed the Pandit to touch his feet at that time. Such is the awareness of the Masters. When Aus Pensky, Pensky decided, he said he want to die walking because no one has died walking. He continued walking until he could not walk anymore and he fell and passed away. If you have not loved the person deeply, then you will grieve very much when he is no more physically alive as you would have known. Everyone and everything need rest. Even a dancer needs rest. Even a singer needs rest. Even a happy person needs rest. One cannot remain in one mood continuously. Indeed, there is no need. When there are so many climates available, why get attached to one? Why not be enriched by all? A man who has attained to his essential center moves on dancing in different situations. Sometimes it is hot. Sometimes it is cold, other times it is joy, and is still it is sadness sometimes. But now everything brings him some message from the whole, from the unknown of existence. Everything has become a messenger. I have heard a very simple story that is very significant. And it will always, and it always happens that significant things are very simple. And simple things are very significant. There was a man of V. Wu V V is the term that coined by Lao Tse means doing and non doing. His name was Tung Mi Wu, who did not grieve when his son died. His wife inquired. No one in the world loved his son as much as you did. Why do you not grieve now he is dead? He responded, I had no son. And when I had no son, I did not grieve. There was a time when I did not have son. I did not grieve then. Now that he is dead, it is the same as it, as it was before. When I had no son, why should I grieve over him now? Indeed, it is very simple parable, but tremendously significant, very meaningful. Enter into it layer by layer. There was a man of we, Tung Mi Wu, who did not grieve when his son died. It is very difficult not to grieve when somebody you, someone you loved so much has died. It is possible only if you have known something of the essential, something of the beyond, something of the awareness. It is possible only if you have tasted something of the deathless, something that is eternal. It is possible only if you have transcended the accidental. He did not grieve, he was not sad, he was not weeping or crying, and he was not broken heart. He remained just the same way as he was before. The wife was disturbed, she said. No one in the world loved his son as dearly, as much as you did. Why did you not, why do you not grieve now he is dead? Ordinarily, this is our logic. That if you love a person too much, you will grieve too much. When he is gone, the logic is fallacious. The logic has a very deep flaw in it. In fact, if you have loved a person really, when he is gone, he is gone, you will not grieve much. Remember, you will not grieve much.
Remember, when I say grief much means the body was also beautiful. A Zen monk, monk passed away. His sister passed away. He lamented. He said, at least the body was also beautiful. Now I will not see the body. That is why there is not much grief. If you have not loved the person deeply, then you will grieve very much. Try to understand this. Your father dies or your mother dies. If you have loved him totally while he was alive, you will be able to say goodbye to him without any grief because you loved him. Just as many times he left the town to go to another town, you simply bid him farewell but he did not cry. That experience of love was total and fulfilling. Nothing is left undone. Nothing is hanging over your head. Whatsoever was possible has happened. Now you can accept it. What more was possible? Even if he had been alive, what more have been possible? The experience is complete. Whenever an experience is total, you are ready to say goodbye very easily, joyfully, singing, dancing and lovingly. But if you have not loved your father as you always wanted to, you have not been respectful towards him as you always wanted to, you will feel guilty. Now the father is gone. Now there is no way to fulfill your desires. Now there is no way to show you respect your love towards him. Now there is no way you will feel yourself hanging in the middle, in the air, in limbo. You will not be at ease. You cannot say goodbye then. You will cry to your, you will cry and weep your heart out and you will be broken. You will say that you are heartbroken because your father is dead. But the real thing is something else. You are broken because now the possibility to love him, to respect him is gone. Now there is no possibility. The doors are closed and you have missed the opportunity. The son will cry more if he has not really loved his father. If he has loved his father dearly, he will be able to accept the fact Love is very accepting and very understanding. Once an experience is total, you can get out of it very easily. You can just slip out of it as the snake slips out of his old skin. If you love a woman and you have been constantly quarreling with her and it never became a deep satisfaction and she dies, now she will haunt you. Her ghost will haunt you for your whole life. You could not do something that was possible. But now it is no longer possible. Now something incomplete will always be there in the heart, hurting, hanging around and it will become a wound. It is the understanding of all the sages that while you love a person, if you love him totally, there is going to be no misery. If you love him totally, if you enjoy and delight in his totality, and the person is gone, of course one feels a little sad. But it is not grief. There is a difference between sadness and grief. One misses a little, but one is capable of remaining centered. One is not distracted. If you are in love, love totally, so nothing remains hanging. Otherwise, that hanging incomplete, exp that hanging incomplete experience, that unlived experience will haunt you. These unlived experiences go on piling up and they become heavy burdens. The problem is that now there is no way what to do with them? You cannot complete them because the person has disappeared. You cannot drop them because incomplete experiences 
cannot be dropped. Nothing can be left in this existence incomplete. Whether it is a love relationship, whether it is anything, it must attain to its fruition. And this is the way of the existence. Everything has to attain to its fruition. When it is ripe, it drops automatically. As long as the fruit is not ripe, it remains hanging on to the tree. The moment it is ripe, it drops automatically. Just the dew drops, slips from the lotus leaf, plop, and disappears into the lake. When it is not ripe, it is difficult to drop. Whenever an experience is complete, it is ripe fruit. It drops of its own accord. It leaves no scar. The wife inquired, No one in the world loved his son as much as you did. Why do you not grieve now he is dead? She is giving the argument of the accidental mind. That is the argument of the accidental man. Why don't you grieve? In fact, the accidental man was not really happy while the person was alive. But he becomes very unhappy when the person is gone. This is how it happens. But you have to remember that the master has experienced his totality. If you love a person totally and the experience is total, has enriched you, you can say goodbye. Of course, there will be sadness, but there will be no grief. The sadness is natural. It will disappear in time. It is nothing to be worried about. You will miss the person a little while, natural, but you will not be in grief. The accidental man says, if you do not cry when a person dies, that means you never loved him. But that is not the fact. If you ask me, love is an understanding. Indeed, the deepest understanding. Nay, love is awareness. Love is light. And love is so understanding that not only does it understand life, it understands death as well. He answered, I had no son once. And when I had son, and now that I do not have the son, I do not grieve. This is the logic of the essential man. This is the logic of awareness. He said, there was a moment in my life when the son was not there and I was happy without him. I had known no grief then. Then son came and I was happy with him. Now he is gone. I am again in the same situation as before he was born. And I was not in grief then. So why should I be in grief now? Again I am in the same situation. The son is not there. I am not the father again. Once I used to be used not to be a father, then I became a father. I am again not a father. Something has happened, disappeared. I am left in the same way as I was. It is said that the masters leave singing and dancing. And throughout the life they teach you something. And in their samadhi, in their disappearance, they give you the final message. They give you the final message. This is the way to watch. This is the way to be when the master disappears in the unknown oblivion. Allow him to enter singing and dancing and be available to that moment of rejoicing. Remember, eternal is true, temporal is untrue, both are real. The accidental is not also real and the essential also real. But with the accidental you will remain in misery. With the essential the doors of the bliss open, the doors of Satchit Anand, of truth, of consciousness, of bliss. Remember this as my message. Remember this story in your day-to-day -day life. Imbibe its impact. If you can remember it, it can become a transforming influence on your life. It can transfigure you 
इट कैन हेल्प यू टू रीच टू योर सेंटर ओम पूर्णमद पूर्णमिद पूर्णा पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्यते नयनम छिन्दन्ति शस्त्राणि नयनम दहति पाप का न चैनम केदयन्तयापो न सोषयति